Hi, Internet viewers. Frank Rauscher again. Uh, on the last video, we got the chickadee and we undercut where the mantle goes. We did something on the cheek area here to put like a crease in it. We also uh, cut in the wings as far as where their boundaries are, I should say. So what I'm going to do on this video is we're going to start marking out the feathers and then I'm going to show you how to start burning them and where we're going to put, how we're going to show the feathers, how we're going to uh, uh, indicate which ones are going to get raised, which ones are going to get burnt and so on. So uh, let me take you on that. Okay. Um, going after my Optivisor again so that I can see what I'm doing. And what I want you to do, we have a center line that's been established coming through the head here. And what I want you to do is come out about uh, not even a sixteenth. And then by the time you get back to here, it's about an eighth of an inch wide. And then we'll pull back in a little bit. So here's what I'm going to do. Off of this line, I'm coming off of here. I'm drawing a line. Like I said, about an eighth of an inch. You can see I'm tapered up to about a 16th here, eighth inch here, and then we pull back a little bit. And this would be almost to like where the end of the cheeks are. If I drew like a line across there, that's about where we want to fade them out for now. So then off of this one, I want to go about maybe a 16th down again, eighth of an inch apart, follow this back, and then pull in a little bit here. Then, I hope, I hope you've seen that. I started moving again, and I apologize. Like I said, here's the center line of the head. 16th here, eighth inch there, and a little less than an eighth back here, so you're pulling in slightly. And I did that and gave it a second row. On the third row here, before we try to establish that one, I'm going to do this. Uh, the chickadee has some markings through it. So I'm putting a line. Here's the center line going through the eye here. And I'm coming up maybe a sixteenth here. And I'm stroking lines like this. I hope you can see this. And I'm staying away from the top of the eye. I'm coming out a little bit more. And as I peel back, I'm, the lines are going on an angle here. And I'm sloping it down to almost to the end of where the cheek turned around right here. Then I'm going to come down to the center line and draw lines through that, that line going right through the middle there. And what this is, is some markings that I want to get in there when we actually uh, start burning it and texturing it and everything else. And I want to show you how I do that. So getting back once we establish this we know where that where we want that and we're going to come in later and actually uh do some work on that as far as lifting goes uh what we have now is from the center we got one two that's this row this will be like the third row and this will come back like this and you automatically have a row because the way this was developed through here okay now in the cheek area we had 
on the last video, we had put this in. Now I'm going to ask you to come up about a sixteenth, a little more than an eighth of an inch, give or take. And then I'm going to come from the back of the eye up uh, just a little bit more than a sixteenth. And, and if you notice, I'm trying to parallel these flowing lines coming around. They're sort of taking this loop action and they sort of flatten out a little bit as they come up. Okay, so I hope you can see that well. Then, uh, what I'm going to do is on the mantle, what we want to do is, uh, I don't know if I should be jumping around or just concentrating on just uh, how we'll do the burning on, on the head here. Let me do that. I'm going to concentrate on just detailing the burning for the head on here. And I'm going to go to the other side now and do exactly what we did before. We come off a 16th here. And by the time we get to here, we're about an eighth of an inch. And then we pull back a little bit like that. Then our second one is going to be about a 16th off of that. And then comes back and then pulls in like that. Now, here's our center line going through the eye. So I start stroking these lines through like this. And then I'm going to come up here and stroke lines above. And that will give me one more row. So I have from the center on one, two, three rows, and then this will be like uh, the uh, chickadee has some streaking going through there. So I'll show you that. So we have the same thing going there. Now I'm going to come down into the cheek area and I'm coming up a 16th, coming back. A little bit more than an eighth and flowing this way. Then, in this case, I'm going to run a line forward of this, come up and just, it's almost like a straight line by the time you get to this one. It does have a little bit of a curve here, but so that's the markings we're having for the head right now, okay? And, uh, one other thing I didn't do in the last video is we have, and let me give you a measurement here, something that I dropped the ball again. From the tip of the beak, we have a bib, and, and uh, the chickadee has like a, a black bib in here that I want to try to get in. So you to get a boundary on it, we do have the center line coming right on through here for the head. And if you measure from the tip of the beak back an inch and an eighth and put a dot right on the center line, then I'm going to ask you to slightly arc. I hope I'm not out of the picture again. Slightly arc that up that way and this way. This is going to be about an eighth of an inch off of where your your mantle and wing collided together. So about an eighth of an inch forward of that. This one here is going to be a little bit more, about three sixteenths. So that'll come up like that. And then in this area, all we're going to do is just some straight line burning, just coming back, and I'll show you how to do that. But I want to concentrate on just how we're going to do the burning on, on the head. So let me do this. I'm going to start by 
what I call little C's and they get bigger as they come back. I'm going to, I'm only going to do half. So you could do the other half and then I'll, I'll show you how I burn it. Okay. So, uh, what I'm doing here is I got one C here. Then I'm going to piggyback off of another one. Then I'm going to go a little further back. Then I'm getting bigger. So I'm increasing the distance each time and making the C's bigger until you get it right about here. Then they start getting smaller again, but I don't want to get too, too small. We're still doing something like that. Okay, so it's... It's a progression of what I call C's. And uh, you have to practice this a little bit. Even if the burning gets a little tricky in that respect. So I'm going to do another one for this row. I'm going to come in here, but I'm starting this one a little bit forward of this one. And this way. I'm not trying to not... I don't want it to look like we got rows of these. We want them staggered slightly. So try to, but don't go crazy over not doing that. You know, if it happens to follow another one, don't worry about it. It'll still come out looking good. And remember, it gets a little smaller as we come back, but not like the front. Then we have in the areas here where I did the markings. I want to do something. And uh, if you'll bear with me one second, let's see if I have all my bits that I need. It. Probably don't. So I'm going to grab a, a real thin vine. Talk about bits. This is what I work with. <laughs> In reality, I hardly use these because I ran classes. I had bits coming out of my bits because I had a I had quite a few people in the class. And we go through these pretty good. So I'm looking for one that has a point to it, okay? And I'm going to grab this one. And it's really fine. It's a fine point at one. It's not like a, uh, a flame tip. It's even pointier than that. And this is diamond. So I'm going to plug this in. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to go in with my pencil marks. And I'm going to strike in there. And maybe I'm not as close with the burning mark. I mean, with the pencil mark. But, um... I'm just trying to mark out, maybe give it a little more space with the diamond bit. You don't have to do this. You could do this with a burning pen too, but I'm just playing around with this. If you need to get this in, I'm going to show you also with the burner how to do it too. Now, I'm going to come in on the next row, which is this short one right here. We're going to keep on doing, oh, well, we forgot this one up here. Let me come back. So I'm going to put this one in over those markings, but not all the way, because that's a row unto itself. And I'm drifting again. I hope I have these and play that you could see all this.
And it wasn't the best C I made, but they'll come out looking okay. Now I'm going to skip from here, and we got this. This is a, a streak in here. That's why we're. I'm going to stay off of that. We're not doing anything with that. And then I'm going to come in and start piggybacking with these C's right on back into here. Then I'm going to go down to the next row. Try to squeeze maybe a little one in there in front. Get a little bigger as I come back. Put one right there. And we can get one up here. 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 A little bigger. A little bigger. And then this is our last row here. So I'm going to mark that out here. 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 And this is where I find, for me anyway, magnification really helps. Here. Let's put one right there. Now, we have this whole side done. I'm going to ask you to do that on your own and I'm going to show you how to come in here with the wood burner and again this here is called a P12S and this is a real fine one and it's uh, really uh, it, it's almost like a uh, it, even if you had a real pointed one, it would work out great. This ha has a rolling edge a little bit, which allows you to uh, just keep real tight, small lines. So I'm going to turn this on, and it only takes seconds for this to warm up. And I'm going to show you. I'm going to I'm going to go in here on the first row off of center and I'm going to burn right up to the beak and I'm stroking straight back all within that feather. I know it's real small. That's why you need a real thin uh, small tip type to get in there. So that's the first one. What I'm doing is burning on the leading edge of front and pulling as I come back. I don't, I'm not actually marking part, most of it, but when it loses its heat in the back, you don't see that many markings. When I go to the larger one, like this one, you may see it better. I, I come in and I get them all tight as I can, and I flare to the left, and I flare to the right, And it takes some practice. This doesn't happen right away. And if you get lucky and do it, great. Here's another one. I come down the middle, go to the left and follow the burn. I mean, the burn follows the pencil line of the C that's in front of it. Okay. And I'm going to do another one, and they get a little bigger, so they're a little more visible to you. And I'm not trying to burn the whole feather. It will texture it. But the burn, what we're doing is we're burning that leading edge. And what it does, it, it depresses this area up in here, right in here and all along that pencil line of the C, we are depressing that, okay? And that's the goal, is to come in here. I can go right over my lines again, but should be able to just do it once and call it a day. So here I am here, stroking it through. And then I'm going to come in here, OK, 
keep on going. And I'm following the C's that are piggybacking there. I don't want to, I hope you can get that. Here's another one. I start right at the C, plunge in, and then I, I fan out to the left and fan out to the right. Now, these feathers are, aren't are too bad, but I've done birds that are smaller. When I do the miniatures, I'm doing the same thing. It can get really challenging in there when you're doing this, but for bigger birds, it shouldn't be that big of a problem. Well, that's one row. Now, I'm going to the next row. We're coming right up to the beak but I'm not on the beak, right up to that edge. I'm burning, let me burn a little bit of the one before it. Then I'm coming in. There, then I come to the next one. Notice, I'm not trying to cover the whole feather. I'm more or less trying to concentrate on getting right up to that edge and depressing it and then pulling back. And I sort of do a lift type. I'll show you again. So I take a stroke that does that doesn't cover the whole feather. And then I fan to the left. I know I got to get in tighter and go up to stay within that pencil mark. And I go to the right and do the same thing. And if I miss a, a, a line, I just go back in over it. You know, no big deal. There's a bigger one here. Here's one there. There. And I just try to keep them tight as best you can. And if you don't have a pen, this is a Optima pen, and they really do nice work. I even have the spear shape, which is the P5, and it goes to a point. That does a beautiful job as well. So, uh, just depends on what you have. And see, now there's a spacing between the two. I could just come in right between and keep plugging away in there. Now the idea is to make it a constant burn on that front end, as close as you can get it, okay? And here's another one. And here's another one. So uh, this gets to be like repetition and I'm just going to try to give you the one side so that you could do the other and I hope you can see that. And uh, what I'm going to try to do too is, uh, is this. Before we do the next row, remember I said I did this with a diamond, I textured it a little bit along here. so. I'm going to come along here and I'm going to stroke just like I had the pencil lines in there right over the diamond markings just like so and that will curtail right there then I'm going to do the same thing on the lower one which is there and there, there. And watch your angle, because that's what happened here. I want to go too straight, but we'll take care of that in a minute. I think I'm drifting again. I apologize. I'll try to stay within the camera range here. I don't know if I did or not. So, 
this is where I textured both with the diamond. Now I'm doing it with the, the burning pen, okay? Now, the line work in here is just going to go, you're filling in straight lines, sort of following that, that angled burn that's in there. So we could just come through here. And all I'm doing is burning right across from one side to the other. I'm not really pressing as hard as I'm just filling in with little, little burn marks. I hope you can see that okay. Okay, now I'm going to jump back because it's easier to get this out of the way. Then I'm going to come in and start burning my little C's again. So I come right up to the beak. Get that one in. The first one is like really just marking the whole thing out. It's very, you can't help because you're so small that it's not much to it. It's the ones further back that start giving it the texture look of uh, a shape to it. There's another one. Then I'll do the next one. And uh, uh, if any of you has never done that much wood burning before, I would uh, stress for you to get just a piece of wood, like a piece of plywood or something like that, make some of these C's and then practice the strokes because I make it look easy and it's not always easy. And the first time may get tricky for you or maybe you fall right into it. You know, that happens. I, I've had students who did it the first time out and I had uh, ones that took quite a while to, to get to it. And this is, I, I think it gives it a real nice look uh, when we're done, even after we paint it, this thing sort of shows through. So, and this gives some separation on the head. And you can see it starts to get a nice look, even on halfway on that. Now we're going to go into the cheek area and I'm going to start, I'm going to do, there's like a little front one in here that I plugged in. So I'm just going to do some straight line work back. Then I'll come into here, and I'll go right into the eye socket and flare my way out and use that as my leading edge. Then I'll do this one. And again, I'm following that C. And uh, that's what's giving me a little bit of curvature in the burn on the leading edge here. See, it's like arcing around. That's Here's that pencil mark that rolls around. So I'm burning all along that edge. So it sort of surrounds that, that pencil line. I'm going to get close. Here's one right here. I'm going to come in. Okay. Now, on this one, I'm going to use the edge of the eye as just my leading edge because there is no C in front of it. And I'll do it that way. And then I'll come in here. And start following the C that's in front of me. And here's another one. And actually, in most cases, there is a burn that's all the way back to here, but it looks so dark up here that you don't really see that. But if you do it right, 
it's a it's a flick. The every time the pen hits for the first time, it gives you a, a deep heat, and then it dissipates. But if you flick it out, it watch. See, I go like this. And I'm not worried about covering the whole feather. You know what I mean? Um, it's it's actually marking it, but it's uh it's not so uh, visible and that's fine too it doesn't have to be a dark burn throughout the whole feather it really doesn't that's not what you're trying to achieve and then i'm going to do this guy here at the end okay now we got two rows to go and we got the head Halfway done, just about. So here we go. I'm gonna do this. This is the little guy up here. So that's just line work. I'm gonna come in here. In here. And uh, there's a lot of burning units out there, but I would try to get you uh, to use something that's pointed or is real in tight like this one. Okay. And, uh, it'll, and the thinness of this, I don't know how well you can see this, but it's really thin in there. And uh, that gives you such nice line work. And that really helps that really, uh, uh, it's getting the right pen. And I'm, what I'm trying to do is get you in getting the right effects the first time out. But, hey, it takes practice, you know. And having somewhat of the right equipment, you can get away with maybe not as uh, fine in the first go around. But as you go... That's what you want to try to consider. You know, uh, my attitude is you work with what you have. And then if you have a desire to keep on wanting to do this and it really interests you, then you, you may want to try to get maybe a better uh, pen or something like that or a unit that works for you. And uh, I, I hate to tell you, what I used to use when we first started out, we had a light bulb that went into a socket and had a cord associated with it. And the wattage of the bulb gave us a dark burn. If you had a 25 watt bulb, you had a real light burn. If you had a uh, 50 watt bulb, it gave you a, dark, a little more darker. If you had a 100 watt, you'd get something really dark, you know. So that's how I learned. And that's, I think the Smithsonian was looking for some of them. <laughs> they were what we originally used. And uh, hey, they worked, but they weren't, I hate to tell you how wide the tip was. The tip was real wide. It was like a wedge, but it honed down into a, a real fine edge, and that's what we use. But if you had to go deep with it, you get a wider, broader burn as you go. And today they're they're much more refined, and you can get all kinds of uh, burning tips that do all kinds of things. I have them in a ball shape. I have them uh, where I actually use some of it like a writing pen it acts like a ball pen and you can sign your work that's that's ideal there's writing pens that are just designed like that it's like having a ball pen in your hand and you can uh, sign your work uh, on a base you know uh, that you may have something you finished or in some of the cases like what I got into was uh, I got into burning to the point 
I've done paintings with burnings on flat artwork using uh, plywood. You get certain kind of plywood that has a nice finish to it on one side. Uh, it's great if it's sanded because that really makes it happen. And I could show you uh, in some cases uh, how that turns out. Now, this is what we're doing on this side, you're doing on this side, okay? Now, the area under uh, the beak here is this. I'm going to use a pen because uh, uh, I don't know if you've seen what I did. I think I took a little too much wood out in this area right here. So what I did is I got some quick wood and I filled it in. Uh, but actually what we're doing in this area here, oof, I don't want that pen, that's too, too, uh, too thick. I'm trying to get a pen that's got a fine tip. That, let's see if this will work. We'll try it. I wanna get line work, just short line work in like this okay and i'm going to show you how i do that all the way down but before we do that see that line we put in as i did earlier here i'm going to uh, ask you to come in with the flame tip let me make sure i shut this machine off so I don't start burning the place down. One thing with burning units, make sure they're shut off when you're done with them. I had a friend of mine he almost set his house on fire because he didn't shut it off properly. So keep that in mind. Now I'm undercutting all along here and I'm doing that very lightly. I'm not trying to uh, get that raised so high. So I'm blending all of the side on the belly side down so it goes away. And what I want to do is also soften it. And I'm going to get the pencil in here so you can see where that at line of action is. And I'm gonna come in. And soften this right here so it blends back. Okay. And I don't want anything standing up. Like, just like that, okay? Now, I'm going to go back to my burning pen. Now, for those who ever use quick wood as a filler and then uh, want to come back in and replace it with wood and you're texturing it, you have to lower the temperature a little bit, maybe a, a half a number because they're like from one to 10. I'm usually burning around a five, five and a half. But when you get the quick wood, it tends to burn faster because you're actually melting it. But I'm gonna take small strokes within here. And I'm just flaring around so that the whole thing is coming down. Here's the center line right here. So I'll do half of it again. And, and I'm stroking through. So you know, if you get too hot, it starts melting and lifting some of the Quick wood. I know I don't have much quick wood in there because I only had a little bit. 
of uh, wood to replace. I think I just took too much out. So, um, trying to be delicate with it. For those who don't have the quick wood in there, feel free just to burn. And I'm burning right on up into that valley. And I'm, and I'm like fanning out. I'm going this way, and I'm going to go that way. Okay, I hope you can see all that. Now, I'm pressing pretty hard over here because I'm hitting solid wood, and I know so in here where I have the quick wood, see how it flakes out a little bit? In fact, I may just sand some of that out because I didn't think I needed that much in there anyway. But I will sand that out. The idea I'm trying to get you to do is to burn the straight lines in there. I'm going to have to do some sanding there. But here's what I would like you to do on the portion that I know doesn't have the quick wood. This is what you're going to get. You're going to get a more intensive burn like this. And you can see it, it's a darker burn. And you're not trying to do all straight pull line work. Just come in here and just, everything doesn't have to be in line with each other. You know what I mean? It's as long as you're just following a direction like so. Now, I think I'm going to get rid of a lot of the quick wood in here. It's going to flake out on me. It's just the nature of it because I got too hot of a tip. But I'll fix that. And when we get back, this will all be taken care of. But this is what I want you to accomplish. You need to uh, get and practice this technique. I would like you to get all of this head done on both sides and uh, that is one thing I think that'll be good and then what we'll do is we'll proceed on and uh, you I also want you to do this uh, chin area here I call it or bib area I should be more correct then I'm going to show you how to put feathers all in here to con create the, the mantle and then we'll start laying in feathers that are coming back building uh, all this right here and put all these feathers in and I'll show you how to do that okay so uh, hope you got something out of this one this is basically a practice in burning and we're going to do a lot of it on here besides the actually lifting of the feathers so uh, if you uh, like what you see, I would ask you to give me a thumbs up. And uh, if you would subscribe to my channel, that would be great. It would really help. And pass the word on if you have friends that are looking for uh, lessons and stuff like that. I've done uh, several different things so far. Uh, I did, uh, 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 what's the name, uh, otters as uh, the first one then i did a cardinal and uh, uh finch and i'm going to be doing several different things along the way so i can teach you different methods uh and techniques so see you on the next video and if you, anybody's interested in any of this uh contact me through my email address uh, in the comments section or uh, comment to me directly with my email and uh, we'll gladly try to help you out and if you have any problems on any of it definitely contact me thank you